Oi, 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 levels, levels. Check, check the mic, check, hey, hey, hey. check, 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 all right, check. So let's just record a little intro to this episode. Of the show. So hello and welcome to Idiots with Instruments, the show that follows Red Hot Rebellion as we record our fancy-ass new album while learning great things from great people in the music industry. I am Jim Tramantana, bassist and lead vocalist of Red Hot Rebellion. Hi, I'm Doug. I play guitar and uh, least important vocal. Hi, I'm Andres. I play the drums and uh, have a sweet poom. <laughs> you do have the sweetest poom in the biz. God, that's a good-looking poom. <laughs> man. Man, sweetest oh, man. Sweetest poom in yeah. the biz. That yeah. is a large claim. Every week, that poom gets more delicious. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That is one delicious poom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So today we got a fancy episode for everybody. Um, if you've ever been interested or wondered how music finds its way into television shows and movies and the like, this is the episode for you. That's true. Yeah. We interview yep. our good pal, Ben Hochstein, who is a great music supervisor yeah. A fantastic human being, and he kind of breaks down uh, the ins and outs of music supervision, how to get music licensed for TV and whatnot skis. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, whatnot skis. Yeah. It's real good. It's real good. Unfortunately, Dougie couldn't make that one, but yeah. uh, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dougie had prior engagements the yeah. when we recorded this, uh, this interview, but he was here in spirit. It's true. I think yeah. we, we asked uh, some yep. poignant questions. And in fact, my good pal Ben decided, uh, well, well, we won't spoil it, but ju- let's just say the Iron Maiden versus Judas Priest uh, question really mm. came to a he- head. Mm. Right? Yeah. Oh, or, wow. Am I overselling this? No. no. A little bit. A little bit. I'm very excited to <laughs> hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we should listen to it now. Sweet. Wait, no, we shouldn't listen to it now because. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I was because, trying to segue. I yeah, I know. Yeah, well, I, I got to do was our That's pretty good. Right? That was a real good segue. <laughs> it was real good. So but, you do that again after okay. I do this. Okay. Uh, just to let Can you we know. we leave this all in there? Oh, yeah, totally. We're going to leave this all in there. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. This episode is brought to you by the fantastic Jamie Subtle. Country and Southern rock fans, make sure you check out the latest release from Jamie Subtle. The album Country Music Revival features favorites like Cash, Jack, and Jesus, Your Kind of Trouble, and of course, the title track. Get it today on Spotify, Apple Music, or jamiesuttle.com. Don't forget to follow Jamie Subtle on social media as well. That's J-A-M-I-E-S-U-T-T-L-E. Ask for it by name, Jamie Subtle. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, uh, the, the drummer of Jamie Subtle might happen to be in the room right now. Really? Andres Rebellion? Do uh, you play in Jamie's live band? I do. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's me. So can yep. you personally endorse how great the album is, Country Music Revival? I can. All uh, right. It, yeah. Endorse it. it it's excellent. <laughs> All right. Great. Yeah. It made I, me very excited to be part of the band. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking fancy. In fact, I'm working on a it's lyric video for uh, Cash, Jack, and Jesus right now for the band. It's, re- it's going to be really good, so nice. I'll let you all oh, know when that's out. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, so. I think that uh, there are also deals on the site where it's like, it's not, there's a t-shirt and stuff. You can bundle yeah. some oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah bundle stuff. So. I bundled stuff. Yeah. Jamie I got a t-shirt and a, and a CD and nice. a little thank you note and everything. Yeah. It was awesome. You too can bundle to your heart's content That's right. on jamiesettle.com. That's true. Yep. So now are you ready for a fantastic interview? Y- yeah, I am. Are you? I'm totally ready. All right, let's roll it right now. <laughs> Is that the sound of an interview? <laughs> <laughs> Joining us today is music supervisor, nice dude, and supreme badass, Ben Hochstein. Ben has extensive experience in music placement and clearance for scripted, reality, and live programming. Some of his career highlights include work on shows for Netflix, Paramount, TV Land, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Bravo, NBC, ESPN, CMT, TBS, WWE, and MTV. Ben, that is some impressive al- alphabet soup, and thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. How are you today? Yeah, man, of course. That's, uh, geez, I don't even remember all of that, but yeah. 
I must have done it. You must have done it. Yeah. It was, it was on the bio. Yep. Yeah. It was in your LinkedIn profile. It's on the internet. Yeah. So. Oh, it must it's be on true. LinkedIn. Uh huh. hundred percent true. Must be true. So, um, so yeah, we um we just have some questions for you about uh, what you do uh, for a living, which is music supervisor. So could you please tell sure. us what is a music supervisor? Uh, yes, the question I get when everyone asks me uh, what I do for a living, and I have to follow it with this long explanation, always fun. Um, but yeah, uh, sort of the basics. Uh, anytime you hear you know a song, a popular song in a film or a TV show, there's probably a music supervisor behind that who is helping you know, identify the song, identify the sound of the project with the various uh, producers or directors involved. And then once it's been identified, the supervisor is in charge of getting all the proper licensing uh, forms out of the way. There can be several uh, contracts and paperwork for every song that you hear. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a dual job. It's kind of half creative, half, uh, you know, paperwork and legal work and uh yeah, stuff like that but uh, it's always different every project is different and uh it's you know i find it very interesting and uh every day is different so what, cool. what yeah. more could you ask for yeah exactly yeah um i don't know i personally i'd like a sandwich but that's just me <laughs> um, so uh can you explain like briefly the difference between like master rights and sync rights uh yeah sure so you know every song you know, has like a master and a sync side. So uh, your master side is your actual recording. Uh, so, you know, Red Hot Rebellion records the music. They own the master. Now they could choose to record a Beatles song. And in that instance, the Beatles song, the sync or the publishing are kind of used interchangeably. That's owned by the Beatles, obviously. Red Hot Rebellion owns the master. Now if Red Hot Rebellion records their own song that they wrote, uh, they would own both the master and the sync again, sync and publishing kind of use interchangeably. Uh, the sync is, you know, the lyrics, the arrangement uh, of the song, whereas the master is the actual recording. Yeah, the so actual. you need both. If you're going to use something in a uh, movie or TV show, you have to get both rights from both rights holders. Sometimes it's the same person. A lot of times it's different, you know, a label signs an artist, they own the master and then someone else signs the artist to publishing. Right. Uh, you know, people are finally getting hip to it these days and they're doing, you know, you hear 360 deals thrown mm -hmm. out and, mm -hmm. uh, they finally figured out, you know, we should really be having both of these sides because there's money to be made in, in sync and in placements. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get both. So that's happening more and more, but, uh, you know, usually you find things are really spread out. So that's part of my job is tracking all that, all that down. Um, yeah. and then with your publishing rights, if it's, you know, Red Hot Rebellion, it's just the band. Maybe it's one or two guys, easy, one email, one phone call, but, you get like a Drake song. There's like you know 15 writers. You have to go to all of those guys, and all of, guess what? All those guys have a publishing deal. So that's 15 different calls, emails, you know, paperwork, licenses I need to get. Right. Uh, in addition, so. And like a particular uh, song could have multiple publishers, right? I mean, beyond like say like me and Andres have a different publishing company. Um, sure. And then so you would have to get both of us to sign off on that, right? Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, you each writer usually has publishing, but then it gets even trickier. Uh, some of the bigger guys, they'll actually, the publisher might sell a stake in that publishing. So now right. for, say, just one person, just for Drake, I have to then go to two different people because Drake's publishing is split. Right. Uh, it's called oh. a co-pub deal. So that's split between two people. So they, you know, it's an asset. They've sold it off. They've gotten some money from someone else. Uh, and so now, you you know, it, it gets even more complicated. So right. uh, that is sort of luckily what keeps someone like me in business uh, is, you know, <laughs> figuring that out. If it was easy, right, you wouldn't yeah, need me. But right. uh, yeah, fortunately, yeah. fortunately, it's not easy. It's complicated. So that, hmm. uh, you know, and, you know, it, it probably sounds more confusing than it is as I ramble through here. But, uh, you know, it, it's it, once you do it a few years, it kind of becomes clear and uh, it's not too bad. Right, right. And is that why, um, like, see, we, we have a, a relationship going back a couple of years. Is, like, is that, sure. is it easier to work with, like, a, a lower-level independent artists than, say, like a Drake or something like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of projects these days, your creative is sort of dependent on uh, your budget and what you can afford. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are not a ton of projects that are going after the premium, you know, Drake-type songs. Um, a lot of projects you need to sort of, you know, find good music on a budget. And that's when your sort of independent artists come into play. Um, 
And if you know, if you're licensing a bunch of different songs, you're doing like a reality show, which has, you know, tons of different songs in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's great to have what's called one stop, which is where, you know, I just go to one person or one entity and they can sort of handle both the publishing and the master and all the different writers. And that, uh, you know, makes it easier for music soups. Um, you know, if rally show, you could have 30 to, to 50 songs you need to license. Yeah. Uh, so you, you know, you <laughs> can't, we can't be going to every single person. So it's, it's helpful. Yeah. The, the, you know, the, the more independent artists that, that own everything themselves, it's very helpful. And then like, say for, for a show like that, you're the, the music supervisor, you find the music, you, you present it to what the director or the producer and they sign off on it. Or are you the final gatekeeper in the, what gets into the production? Uh, we're usually never the final one. Uh, <laughs> there's always someone else that, you know, uh, something that's objective is music. You know, everyone's got an opinion on it. And, right. uh, right. you know, whereas like editing is a little more complicated. If you don't really have a background editing, you might not really want to make edit notes cause you might not feel comfortable, but guess what? Everyone's going to make music notes. And like, I don't like that. Or I heard <laughs> this song in my yoga class. It would be great. So right. we deal with that a lot. A lot of different personalities chiming in, um, you know, our, our every, I mean, every job's different. There's jobs where, uh, you know, I have more say in what gets in the show I'm doing called, uh, called on my block on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Uh, luckily the showrunner, you know, I know her taste, she trusts me. So a lot of the music that you hear is music that I've sort of picked myself and I've worked with an editor and like, this would be great in the scene. And of course, uh, you know, the showrunner is going to sign off and the network's going to sign off before it goes in, but I, I have a lot more control. Whereas other projects, you know, the songs are already in the script or the director loves, you know, mm. whatever band modest mouse and he wants all modest mouse songs. And your job is just kind of <laughs> to go license it and figure it out or right. find him modest mouse, uh, you know, more affordable yeah. modest mouse That's, that he can afford. So, so uh, yeah. it, it really just depends. Every, every gig's a little different. Um, but yeah, no, at the end of the day, there's a lot of different cooks in the kitchen deciding on the music and, and part of that part of my job is really sort of balancing egos that's sort of the the third <laughs> yes. part of music soup's job is you know yeah. babysitter and you know sort of just grief counselor know, di yeah disaster <laughs> yeah. management you know it's that's just nice. kind of putting out fires and uh kind yeah. of keeping the wheels on because people love to just throw out songs or you know let's try this or what if we do that or you know right. if we just put different if we just found different music this show would be good you know so <laughs> there's always there's always that one or i'll know it when i hear it you know i just yeah. i don't know it i want it to sound like uh cardi b you know and uh right. so that's kind of a lot of it is interpreting what people mean and uh Mm -hmm. uh, you know what what they actually want right yeah 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 and you you mentioned netflix i i did have a question uh, about that like sure. how um how does like netflix and amazon prime differ than say like web only productions like uh facebook watch and youtube is uh that a different animal or are they all kind of the same nowadays um you know everyone's still trying to kind of figure that out there <laughs> it's it's really changing by the day um a Netflix Amazon Prime is considered a streaming service. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if they consider Facebook a streaming service or 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 web. Uh, you know that that's my new show when you're doing clearance. But um, you know the, the rates are usually similar these days. Um, mm -hmm. You know it used to be if you had a network TV, they would get you get if you're an artist, you get the most payment for that. Cable would be second. Mm -hmm. Anything online would be you know greatly reduced but nowadays with everyone watching netflix and you know even youtube you see people pushing to get higher rates for just online stuff so it's really kind of in flux and you have sort of a battle between um the artists and the producers about what you know what uh who should pay what for what kind of thing right. um typically though if it's just like if you're doing like an internet short it's just going to be on the web or something like that usually you you know those budgets have less money overall um so you can get stuff for cheaper, but you know, you're not really getting a break at Netflix. You know, there, uh, people are kind of onto that. <laughs> you know, Netflix <laughs> right. is not, you know, and once you put whatever, some billions of dollars in your programming, they're not going to buy it. If you're like, we don't have any money. We're just, yeah. you know, online. So, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. you know, net Netflix, uh, it, it depends, but you know, we were, we were sort of a lower budget Netflix show. Uh, with that said, we had a bigger budget than, you know, most cable shows do, but you know, we weren't, you know, like a, a Stranger Things or a, right. you know right. some of these bigger Netflix shows that have that have more money. You can usually just tell that the music budget's usually, uh, you know, proportionate to the rest of the show. So you know, you can see if a show's got higher production quality and it's uh, obviously more money sunk into it, they're probably gonna have a bigger music budget. Right. Uh, whereas if you're a smaller show, on my block was kind of a smaller comedy. Um, you know, our our budget was a little smaller, so. 
Right. We had to work with that. And then you go to something like an MTV or a Viacom where I've done a lot of work, you know, you're going to find, uh, you know, your budget's getting squeezed more and more as, uh, you know, overall budgets go down. Music you know, usually follows suit and music's usually one of the first things that gets cut, unfortunately, um, mm-hmm. just because, they, you know, they got to find cuts somewhere. And then, uh, unfortunately, you know, music, we're often the first to kind of get, get our budget cut. Always getting the short yes. end of the stick. Yeah. So you're, well, no, you're no one really understands yeah. music. It's not like you're. It's not like you know. I'm paying an editor. I'm you know paying for a set designer. You know, it's right. it's literally like this, just you know, virtual thing. And then yeah, people don't ethereal. still. Yeah. They're like, how can we pay? You know, how can a song cost you know fifty thousand dollars? Doesn't make any sense. We're just playing a song, but <laughs> right. Yeah, I uh, listened to it on the radio this morning. What right. do you mean it costs exactly? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was really free. <laughs> It's really hard for people to grasp that that something yeah. that's just plain literally costs all that money, but uh, yeah. you know, guess what? It does. So, yeah. and uh, you're a freelancer, right? So, like, how does that work? Are you hired for like a production per season, or like you bounce around a lot? Like, what is? What yeah, is right. Whoever, whoever will have me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know I it's it, it's getting bad. Freelance is getting bad. It's exactly that. I can, uh, you know, I don't punch a clock. I don't, you know, have to go into one office every day. I'm, you know, I have many bosses, but I'm also my own boss. You know, I have many clients, but I'm also kind of in control of my schedule. Um, I sort of came up working on Viacom shows. That was kind of where I got my start. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've sort of, you know, been doing Viacom projects on and off almost my whole career. So, um, you know, I am freelance, but I, I do a lot of work there. But yeah, you know, I've, I've done stuff elsewhere as well. Uh, people move all around, you know, producers. And usually who hires me is either like a showrunner or like a post producer or maybe an editor will say like, Hey, this guy's great. You should get him to do music. Um, right. Okay. So that's kind of, you just kind of get, uh, you know, you kind of get in the flow of things and you meet people and like any sort of freelance job or most jobs in Hollywood are like that, you know, it's yeah, kind of project a, to project it's a relationship, um, relationship yeah. business and a project. Yeah, business. exactly. Yeah. So you go for, and you know, people said, Oh, do you want to do something more permanent? Like with a, you know, like a staff position somewhere. And I said, well, you know, you get fired from one staff position, you're out of a job. Whereas if I get fired from one show, I got another one. So, right, right. um, I, I kind of like freelance cause it, uh, you know, in a way I always feel like there's more stability there because I'm able to work on as many things as I can, I can handle yeah, um, you versus, you know, and if it's a bad situation, guess what? It's probably over within three to four months. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. And is yeah. there a season to yeah. like your production schedule or are you basically going full tilt all year round? I mean, there used to be, you know, you'd hear about sort of pilot season and then pickups and, uh, you know, that's kind of going by the wayside, the old sort of, that's the old kind of, network model which right. uh you know still exists to some some degree but nowadays there are shows popping up all you know all all times of the year um i haven't done i've done i've done a couple network pilots but i never really got into that uh you know track so to speak so i don't have a ton of experience there but um you know that you know i find that there are shows all year round so right right hmm. right and yeah. then, so I, I guess um, coming back to the um, like this, the song itself, um, and um, if you could explain a little to our listeners who may not know what a performing rights organization is and, and what they do in relation to when your song is played on a TV show. Sure. I guess I should have studied before this call, huh? Sorry. They <laughs> put me on the spot. Yeah. Um, performing rights organizations, uh, they're you know, like ASCAP and BMI, CSAC we have in the States. Um, but they're all over the country. You know, the France has one, Canada has one. Um, some of them are, you know, for profit, like BMI, some are like ASCAP, I believe is not for profit. Uh, basically what they do is they collect, uh, royalties for songs played from networks and then they pay out to the writers of the songs and the publishers of the songs. Um, and it's just sort of normally knows it's kind of amorphous black box formula, how it comes up. It's supposed to loosely based on, uh, you know, ratings, like how many, the more people watching your show, the more royalty you should get for that, mm-hmm. uh, particular. But it's all voodoo, I've, isn't it? It's all voodoo. It, it, it kind of <laughs> is like if you're a songwriter, you know, you probably know, you're probably like, wait, why is my check so much less this week? You know, why does a vocal pay more than instrumental? And if it's 30 seconds, it pays more than 15 seconds. So, right. and, and everyone's got their own formula. Um, and, you know, rights that have been negotiated with places like Netflix are lower than on terrestrial TV. And no one really knows why, because uh, mm-hmm. more people are watching Netflix. But uh, those, you know, contracts between the PROs and the networks are constantly 
being renegotiated. So, you know, at some point you would expect to see the shift to where, you know, you're getting more for like a Netflix or an Amazon placement right. than maybe you do now. Um, and is it necessary but, for, for someone to be a member of a pro to like effectively license their music? Um, you don't have to be, but you know, you're missing out on, on money if you're right. not. You're uh, leaving it on because, the table. Exactly. You know, there's up front, if you're lucky, you get upfront money when you do a license. I'm like, Hey Jim, you know, here's a thousand bucks mm-hmm. for me to license your song. Uh, and then once it plays on TV, every time it plays, you, you know, first time it plays, you might get 200 bucks and every subsequent time you might get only five bucks. But <laughs> if you're on an MTV show, you know, you know, those things play all the time. So, you know, maybe at the end of the year, you know, five times, you know, 500, you all of a sudden you've made a little bit of money. Right. Um, mm-hmm. and a lot of times, you know, you don't see upfront fees for these smaller sort of cable shows. You've got guys literally, you know, what's doing a grip called a gratis license. So they're, mm-hmm basically giving you their their music for free or you'll see these big libraries will do you know overall deals with the network and they'll give their music for free and they're counting on that bulk use usage uh you know to equate to royalties being paid out Mm -hmm. um so yeah you don't have to be but uh you know it just takes a minute to sign up online and uh yeah yeah, like you said you leave money on the table if you're not and do you deal with uh, music libraries um much or is it usually direct to uh, uh rights owners yeah, no, I, I, I do both. And, you know, libraries are a big part of it. And, uh, you know, these days, uh, the libraries, music libraries, music catalogs, they sound great. It used to be when I started, you had a lot of producers saying, hey, I don't want library, quote unquote, library music because it was a dirty word. I want real bands and real stuff and more authentic. Yeah. And, you know, libraries were considered like some guy on like a keyboard somewhere making these really, bo- you know, can sounding <laughs> tunes. But, you know, with technology and plugins now, it's, you know, it's crazy. Like what I, you know, I always used to remember, you could always tell by the drum sound on the track if mm-hmm. you knew it was a library track because the drums will never, you know, that good or the horns never that good. You'd be like, oh, yeah, that's a library. That's, you know, you know, fake synthesized yeah. drums. But, you know, nowadays, you know, you can't tell like stuff sounds so good. And a lot of libraries have a lot of money behind them and their, you know, investment behind them. And they're putting together these, you know, great tracks that, you know, I've had producers pick out the track from the library and be like, this is great. Like, why, you know, why haven't I heard this on the radio? And, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, that it's just a library track. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's, it's I, I try not to say libraries, you know, because like I said, it kind of has a stigma attached to it. But right. Um, it really depends where you're getting the music from these days because your library could sound better than, you know, your, your rock band on the street if their production value isn't, isn't great. Um, right, right, right. But especially with like, you know, hip hop or, or, you know, pop that needs really high end production value, yeah. you're going to find a lot of quality stuff in, you know, your quote unquote library. So, um, yeah, they're, you know, vocals, everything. They're, they've come a long way even since I, you know, I've probably been doing this, I don't know, 10, 12 years. Uh, you know, the music's come a really long way and it's really high quality. Um, do you think they're going to overtake like say the indie bands? Of the, um... Uh, you know, a lot of them sign indie bands too. Like yeah. they'll, you know, they sort of got hit to the idea that oh, we want real bands behind our stuff. So they're actually sign a band, even do like a record deal with them. And if right. that, hey, if that band blows up, that's one more asset that they own. So, right. that's um, interesting. That, you know, a lot of indie, and a lot of guys write for libraries. You, you know, you mm-hmm. see libraries like, you know, extreme has, uh, you know, like Hans Zimmer writing for them and, you know, huge junkie XL and huge guys are, you know, saying like, Hey, I can, we're out making an album. I can get a check for, you know, 10 grand to do, you know, a bunch of library tracks. That sounds like a good deal to me. So, um, there's a lot of crossover. Uh, I think it just really depends on, you know, what you're looking for in the project. Some, you know, when we're doing stuff for, you know, like Jackass, we want, you know, really authentic sounding, you know, punk and rock. And sometimes, you know, that's not going to be in your library. So, there's still stuff where I think bands kind of went out. Um, you can still kind of, you know, hear it when you're, you know, there's something about songs that are made intentionally for sync, you know, right. so to speak, which mm-hmm. is like intentionally for uh, putting on TV. Uh, you see, there's still kind of a difference in between that and something where, you know, yeah. someone's like making something it's based like on cool. their experience of the, you yeah. know, their love and they're putting everything into it. So, um, like Not always, but I, I still I still give a little advantage to you know the band, the real bands, and the artists out there. Uh, but you know, it's becoming harder and harder to tell the difference. It, it's all crossing over and intermixing. Did you yeah. have a question there? Oh well, I, I had a couple things. Uh, one of them. So sure. I want to jump back a little bit. Did you go to school? Did I go to school? Like college? <laughs> like no, did you, you get? You did you get college. a degree? <laughs> uh, I did actually. Um, 
I went to school for, I went to a liberal arts school, which is, okay. means they teach you nothing about the real world. It's just, you know, philosophy, history. So it had nothing <laughs> to do with music. I, you know, I don't even, to be honest, I don't even play music. I was never a musician. I never thought I'd be a music supervisor. I never okay. tried to be one. Um, I, I was always a music fan, I'm very into music, but I just, right. you know, sort of fell into this as a career. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're looking to get into music supervision, you can certainly, you know, go to, a, a, you know, a music school. I think that would put you on a leg up. But if you can do that, you might as well try to be an artist. But, yeah, that's one thing. And then, you know, there's, at least in Los Angeles, there's, you know, UCLA and, and USC has sort of, you know, business, uh, music business degrees, which are great. Um, right. And all of that. But, you know, I really just kind of learned on the job, kind of like old school Hollywood apprentice style. You know, I worked for a supervisor. I learned this stuff come up. I talked to people. You know, I just kind of learned as I went. Um, I didn't really have any experience, you know, and in school. School didn't help me for my job at all. I, you know, so. Interesting. So you yeah. started working for Viacom. Is that kind of how you started building the relationships where you could actually become a freelancer? Like. Yeah. I mean, I, you know. Is that where most of like, that comes like, from? Like Viacom never like hired me on staff, and you'll you'll find that like there there's very few people actually hired on staff because you know they okay. if they don't have a show going they don't want to pay you so they're just going to pay yeah. you when they have a show going. So you know I, I my very first show is called Parental Control on MTV. If you remember that it was like this crazy dating show where like they interview the parents, and so that was like my very yeah, first yeah. gig. Um, I vaguely but, you know, remember that show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that was cool. But you know, they're subsequently they're making all the other shows around us back in the day excuse me, everyone was kind of in the same area. So you, you know, you'd meet, Oh, a producer on this show. And they'd be like, Oh, Hey, and you talk to them. Hey, what, what are you working on? Like, Oh, I got another show coming up. Like I don't have a music guy, you know, usually my music guy. So it all kind of started for me at Viacom, okay. um, which was well more MTV. And we were, they were more separate back in the day. So it was really just MTV. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just, that's kind of, I kind of went from there and I, I met people on MTV shows that were, you know, cycling in and out of MTV and other places. And um, that was kind of the genesis of, of where I started. What did you do before you started uh, this? <laughs> before, eh, well, I was, I was, yeah, I was on the streets. No, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the streets. No school. No, no <laughs> direction. <laughs> um, no, actually, I I got the job pretty soon after I graduated. But my very first job in LA was actually sort of in corporate PR, which was not uh, you know not like celebrity PR, but I worked for. Uh, you know, like companies, like I was on the Old Spice account, right, for Procter oh, and Gamble. Okay. So we yeah, were like, how yeah. do we, how do we get news for, for uh, Old Spice? You know, <laughs> and uh, it's kind of, you know, it's just more of like, oh, here's a good, good quality job. I remember, you know, you get off at five every day. Like it kind of had some good consistency, unlike what I do now. But I, you know, I just, I knew pretty quickly within a year that that wasn't really me. Um, and you know, in the meantime, I was just going to concerts, and you know, I met music soups that worked at MTV, and that's kind of you know, we started talking and that's kind of how, uh, I got in over there. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm a really bad example when people say, how do you become a music supervisor? You know, <laughs> like I'm a terrible example cause it was really just luck. You just, and, you know, I had an opportunity, I took it, you know, I didn't fuck it up and I, uh, you know, got my foot in the door and just went from there. But really I wasn't, I didn't even know what a music supervisor was. You know, yeah. they, they started telling me, I'm like, Oh, that sounds it's really cool. And I remember the reason I got the job is because like I went with like a collared shirt to the interview. They're like, Oh my God, like, you know, you're so well dressed. And I'm like, what? Like, it's just, you know, coming from a corporate world. I was like, uh, yeah. Well, what do you mean? Down. And they're like, Oh, you know how to use Excel and Microsoft Word. I'm like, doesn't everybody, but you're not uh, a caveman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, apparently they're getting like a bunch of roadies and various people who, okay. you know, had the music side down, but I had no idea how to, you know, survive in sort of a the somewhat corporate I use that in quotes, somewhat corporate environment, which, you know, mm -hmm. as we all know, entertainment is not really, you know, it's not corporate. It's just kind of all, <laughs> all over the place. But, yeah. um, yeah, so that, that is funny. Like, yeah, I knew, I knew about music and I, I mentioned certain bands and they were impressed and da da da. But really what got me the job was sort of my, the other side of that was my business skills that I, you know, gained from working in a, like a corporate office for, for a year and a half. Nice. Um, and you know, how to CC on an email, you know, just very <laughs> simple yeah. things that, Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. How to spell. <laughs> yeah. Um. You yeah. also. You said that you moved to LA. Where are you from originally? I'm from the Bay Area originally. Okay. I came down here for school and then kind of stayed. But yeah, I was uh, not an LA native. Okay. That's cool. I yeah. I just like I like to find out about people and how they sure how they did stuff before they got into the music 
business. <laughs> yeah, no, I sometimes so, look back and I'm like, how did I get this? Right, crazy. This, yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. yeah, I was never on like a street team or I never even, in, you know, I interned at like a internet company in the Bay Area. You know, I just didn't, uh, I didn't even, wasn't even thinking about working in music. I was like, you can work in music? What? So, yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, I, music I, was like my, my hobby, so... <laughs> Yeah, I'm still uh, I'm still shocked by the fact that people can work in music. <laughs> yeah, right? I feel like I've been yeah. trying to for like 20 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, but, it's it's tough, man. It's getting tougher and tougher too. I don't know how anyone you know even makes money. I don't know how bands make money. Like even big bands that you know, yeah, that you that are you know everyone knows by name that you know are barely eking out a living these days. Um, yeah, so, it, you know, it seems like so. I've gotten to tour a, a, a bit and play different places and meet like different. I guess I, I would call them actual musicians. Yeah, <laughs> and sure. It seems like pretty much everybody has some sort of second income, whether they like own a business or uh, work for some other asshole. Right, <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Cupcake. No, it's uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's you know it's too bad. Like in, in a lot of other countries, there's uh, you know grants and and stuff through the government that you know right. people can live off of sustain off of and make just focus on making music you know yeah. up and coming bands and you know they did you know they, they talked about it. that's why you know that's just successful music swing like it's seen like a country like sweden or something like that because you know they have yeah, they this sort of government it. or canada even they yeah, have like yeah. government subsidized Bieber you know, art yeah <laughs> that's right? what they so, gave us Bieber. Uh, it's too bad right because like yeah. otherwise it's only rich kids and like you said people yeah. who are working for some other asshole that actually have right. the you know yeah. That are 22 and actually can just take the time to make right. music. So well, yeah, I'll tell absolutely. you what, yeah. we, we talked to Snow not too long ago, and he's from Canada, and yeah. that guy's crazy <laughs> in a good way. See? He's awesome. <laughs> yeah. He's still around. Yeah, yeah, he's still around. He's man. uh, tr- I think he's trying to make a comeback yeah, or whatever. He, he's not allowed in the U.S. anymore, so that's that's. Uh, he's not allowed in the U.S. Yeah, there were- <laughs> yeah, I, it, it was hard to get the actual story behind that, but he mentioned it a couple times. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, wow, well, so if you've got sure. snow. I mean, I'm you know. It's uh, you you went you went down getting me this week. Nah. So. <laughs> no, man, no like, like most no. of the people who listen to us are like, like are any musicians or just music fans, and yeah. like uh, people yeah. ask like me all the time because they know we've licensed music a lot. Um, like how do you yeah. do this? And like I try my best to explain it. I'm like, you know what? L- why don't we get an expert on here to kind yeah, of explain right. it to us? And that's that's you, my good friend. And yeah, yeah you know your shit. Because no, it's uh, yeah. it's it's tough these days. So you want to know like how people want to know how to get their music out. To like supervisors yeah exactly I'm and assuming like what, that's on your list yeah. that, that is on my list and also like yeah. how, how important are instrumentals because every mm. band i i work with like whether it's um you know friends of mine or or like uh younger bands i'm always like get instrumentals you asshole yeah. like but, <laughs> but we're already out of the studio i'm like tell them to mute the vocals and bounce <laughs> yeah. down the yeah. instrumentals yeah, no, you don't sound as good as you think. That's the instrumentals. Um, <laughs> no, it's important. Like a lot of people now, they want full stems because they're used to getting that from the library. So oh, wow. you know, especially reality shows, they want full stems. Huh. Um, to which I say, what are you gonna do with a stem, man? That's you know, you got enough to worry about. You right, go, you, like, you got to mix re- it. Recut this whole song, yeah. yeah. But at least instrumentals, like minimum instrumentals, just to have that flexibility when you're working on TV. You know, mm-hmm. you've got dialogue, you got to work around, and you know, I've I've mm-hmm. literally seen. Uh, bands lose placements because they didn't have an instrumental. So, right. wow. Um, yeah. So, and so it's, I guess it's very important, as well as like beginning, middle, and ends to your songs. You know, like yeah. don't don't like you know fade out your songs if you can help. Well, if you're writing for TV, I mean, I don't want to tell you what to do if you're just trying to make your songs. But you know, we we can't deal with songs that fade out in TV. Like we need that ending. If we want to fade it, we'll just fade it ourselves. But right. we can't make an ending if there isn't one. So. It's always good to have a nice hard, you know, punch out or right. sting out on something that, you know, we the editors can use to edit with or at least put us, you know, put it on your instrumental version. If you if you want your main track to fade out, at least put it on your instrumental so it's available. Yeah. Um, that's very important as well. You know, good, good uh, sort of beginnings of songs are always important. You know, think about an editor cutting a song to a scene. You, know, you want like a nice whatever it is, a drum roll or a hit or some kind of kick drum or something to kind of get you into the song yeah um you know and then you want obviously like a middle you don't just want the same you know thing repeated looped and infinite you know it's nice to have some changes going on there or you know some progression or have the song go somewhere or build something you know mm-hmm. that's always important um if you're making music with sort of getting it you know put on tv or, or films in mind that's something to keep uh 
yeah. keep thinking about. Have so, you, have you seen uh, the stuff like popping up on the internet lately, where there's like seem to be a bunch of coaches that are like trying to teach uh, different musicians how to write specifically for TV? And what, oh, interesting. And, and what? Oh, okay. Maybe you haven't. <laughs> well, I've seen this. Come Not up. really. No. Um, and what would you, what would you think about that? And like, I guess the the upshot is, you know, what the TV shows that you watch, you can write those type of songs. Uh, you know, just try to make them as authentic as possible. But like, you have to go into it with the the idea i'm going to write um a song that's going to be on you know um what's a tv show these days i don't watch what's, them what's a tv show <laughs> cheers i don't know i don't yeah. know i want something <laughs> yeah. on, on you know cheers or you know i, I want to ridiculousness <laughs> is the only thing i can think like of cops yeah cops. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's I guess really writing tough. to market right you know yeah. yeah it's really tough to like oh i'm going to write for this particular show. I mean, probably by the time you get the song done, it'll be on the show. It'll be canceled. So, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if you, you know, you, like I said, you do those certain things in your songs, you have instrumentals, you end it, you start it, you know, you keep sort of the current trends in mind. Like, okay, you know, maybe I'm not going to do a dubstep track. Maybe I'm going to do a tropical pop thing. Cause that's more mm-hmm. where, you know, you, you, you sort of have to be aware of the trends and they, they change so fast. So that's the hard part about writing for TV, you know, you might be like, I just finished this great dubstep album. You're like, oh, sorry, sorry. man. Like, you know, we don't want that shit. <laughs> Nobody you know? cares. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that's you, you have to stay current, but at the same time, you know, just if you're going to do that, you have to be prepared to be constantly writing because, you know, that your yeah. your tracks are going to be outdated in six months. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, just prepare to be writing a lot. But, you know, if you're like a young band and you're more interested in, you know, playing your music or touring or whatnot, you know, like I caution you to to change your style just for TV because there's these, you know, TV writers and libraries that really have that master. They have that down. You're not going to beat them. So try for something authentic and Mm -hmm. interesting and different because music students are always looking for, you know, that next big thing, that next interesting thing that, you know, you're, you know, especially like a bigger budget show, uh, you know, if you're trying to get your song on a bigger budget show, they're not going to place a bunch of generic kind of sounding right. current tracks. Whereas, you know, I work on a show called Basketball Wives now on VH1. Like, yes, they're looking oh, for, yeah. you know, very sort of common reality style hip hop beats, kind of stuff like that. Um, but, you know, there's so much of that out there with libraries. It's like you're, it's going to be really tough to get in that game. I would right. say just focus on, you know, your authentic music and that's got a better shot to, to bubble up. And then, you know, it's how do you get your music on TV? It's kind of the same way. How do you get on the radio? How do you get big? You sort of build something organically. Mm-hmm. You know, you get it going from, you know, word of mouth and from, you know, online, obviously, because music students pay attention. We read blogs, you know, we, you know, hear stuff from, from people, you know, we go on SoundCloud, like we're, we're hearing this stuff mm-hmm. and, you know, we like to discover new stuff. So we're like, oh, here's a really cool artist. They're not signed. You know, they're doing good stuff. I'm going to reach out to them. Or maybe there's, you know, like a publisher that sees you or there's a lot of these third party places now where they sort of go out, they get the, the rights to the music and then they come to me and say, hey, here's some great stuff that I'm licensed that, you know, I have to license, which music soups love because then we don't have to talk an artist through the process. They've already done that. Right, and we right. know it's legit. We know, you know, yeah. there's the legally everything's done and we, uh, you know, we trust these third party guys. We trust their taste. I know who's good. I know who to go to. So it's a great sort of shortcut for me. So, you know, that's a great, you know, these, they're called, I guess, music pictures, you know, they usually take a percentage, you know, anywhere from like 20 to 50% or right. of, you know, whatever you're going to get paid for your license. And, you know, maybe it seems like a lot, but look, you probably aren't going to get your license. Otherwise, if you're just some guy off the street, I'm probably going to ignore your email or, you know, not open it, but if it's coming from a, a, one of my trusted music pictures, Right. You know, I'm going to open it, listen to it. So yeah. it's, uh, you know, kind of look at it that way. Yes, you might be giving up a lot, but, you know, it's in a sense, it's found money because you're not going to get that on your own. Um, right. Yeah. And someone's so starting I, out from scratch, right? Like they, they, it's frowned upon to just start blasting, you know, generic emails to all the music supervisors you can find. I mean, right? I mean, you can, but they're probably, I mean, we get so many emails a day, we're probably not going to read them. Right. But, you know, so what if would you be good advice to like, get your attention then, like, say, someone coming out of the blue? Yeah, probably not. Like I said, not cold call emails. The best way, best way is to sort of build something organically. So it's, you know, you have a presence online yeah. um, and you know, let people, you know, let, you know, let like, you know, bloggers or, you know, Spotify playlists that people are listening to. Like that's, you know, music soups are going to see that also. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you can always try, you can always, you know, keep it short. Just be like, Hey, you know, I'm da 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 from wherever. And, you know, 
getting some traction on blah, blah, blah. Here's my song. It's up for licensing. It's one stop. You know, just right. be very short and to the point. Don't give me some whole, you know, life story paragraph. You know, just music soups can read about two sentences before they sort of, you know, glaze over. So <laughs> yeah. maybe less, maybe one. But uh, And treat them know, like human beings. These are real, some, real people. You, you yeah. know, pictures are good. Graphics are good. Like, yeah. you know, that, you know, it's funny now because, you know, CDs and well, vinyl is coming back, but right, CDs are obsolete. But I, you know, it was the other day I was just saying like how so much of the, you know, I grew up with CDs and so much of the music in my memory is linked to those album covers, right? Like, yeah. so that's how I'm like, oh yeah, that was like the red album. That was like that one. So it's, it's, you kind of don't have that anymore, that image. And the image says so much about, you know, a, a band, an artist, you know, an artist is going to express themselves through music, but also through artwork. So, um, I always loved kind of seeing artwork or, you know, accompanying stuff to the music because in a way it gives me like a quick visual of what i'm about to hear is this going to be like an you know some sort of indie thing or is this going to be a hip-hop thing or is this going to be some you know kind of yeah. new hybrid thing and you can tell a lot from artwork so right. um yeah, yeah. Yeah. and you know you you know as just being an intelligent artist you know you kind of get it you know what you know you've seen a lot of artwork and a lot of music so you, you kind of know what how to brand yourself but that that's i think that's important too like a nice image is always helpful uh to sort of associate music with you know maybe an image of you i'm like oh that guy looks cool okay i'll check out his music or you know this no no way this guy's cool i'm not gonna you know, listen to him so you know, I, hate, I hate to say it but yeah you you know if you're sending a cold email you've probably got you know five seconds of, of if he even opens it you got you know five seconds of that guy looking at your email to catch his attention right, to just yeah. click on it and sometimes i will sometimes that something will intrigue me and i'll click on it and i'll be like oh let me hear this and usually in five seconds i'm like nope you know rejected but um <laughs> yeah. You know, like I said, once in a once in a blue moon, I'll find something just that someone just approaches me and just you know sends it to me. But usually, um, it's either I find it, I read about it somewhere, or someone I trust says, "Hey, have you heard this? Or have you listened to this?" Um, or I'll see it like I'm going through you know like a SoundCloud thing, and I'm like, "Oh, here's some you know someone linked to this site," and, I, and I'll find it that way, or you know similar artists on Spotify. I'm like, "Oh, hey, who's this guy?" And I heard of him, and I'll start listening. Uh, you know, you go down that rabbit hole. So usually, that time finding you know new stuff it's not from just people reaching out um so you know i'd really focus on either getting someone to pitch your music or getting a publisher you know and those people i think tend to take more like cold submissions because they're actively in that business of looking for like the next hit so i I would almost focus my attention there than on music supervisors um interesting yeah are we past the trend like a couple of years ago, like when Glee kind of broke uh, f- the band Fun? They were like for a while, people were like, music supervisors are the new A and R reps. They're the ones finding all the great new artists. Is that still a thing, or is that just like kind of a, a one type kind of moment in history? Or wow, the Glee did Glee break Fun? I didn't know. That's, that's yeah, that's um, that's what I that's what I remember. Yeah, I, is that who I blame Glee for that? <laughs> no, I love yeah. Fun. Um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely TV is like the new radio for sure. It's right. still, you know, that's where people are discovering music. Um, there's a great, uh, there's a great site called Tune Find where you that kind of right. keeps track of all the songs on all of, you know, the shows, which is great. And I use that a lot to see yeah. stuff or see where stuff's placed. So that, yeah, people are definitely finding music through TV yeah. and film. No, that's, that's bigger than ever. Um, I've used Tune our, Find our music to kind of reverse like engineer. Anna, Sorry, what? Um, sorry, I was saying I was gonna. I use Tune Find kind of to reverse engineer. Like I'll hear a song on a show and be like, "Oh, that band sounds cool." What, what, you know, who are they? Who's the music supervisor who, from that show? And then you will be like, "Hey, I got something that sounds similar. What do you think?" Oh, yeah, yeah that, no, that's a great use for it too. That's a great yeah. idea. So yeah, but, uh, um, you know, then, no, it, yeah, it, it's bigger than ever. But yeah, are we the new A and R? I mean, yeah, I'm sure music soups like to think that, but. Yeah. Uh, you're out there know. in the club. Sure. You're smoking yeah. cigars. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> hook is on both arms. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you find music in the club. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's the last concert you went to? Like actual live music that you saw? Uh, the last one. Um, hold on. Someone else is trying to call me here. Let me. Uh, you can. You can edit this out. I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, last con- I'm going to a car seat headrest tomorrow or Friday. Nice. That's coming up. Very cool. Um, I don't know. What did I go to last? I can't even remember. That's what a blur it is. I go to less concerts these days. I have two right, little kids, so that kind of oh, yeah, cuts, okay. cuts yeah. into your concert going. But uh, and, and it's funny now. I, when I started doing this, I used to go to a lot 
more concerts and I go to two or three a night. And, you know, a lot of times we'd see opening wow. bands that we never heard of and we'd be like, Oh, this band's really cool. And a lot of times they just hang around, talk to the band and I would literally get their CD and it'd be on parental control the next day. Right. So awesome. that used to happen. But yeah. you know, nowadays everything's on the internet. You don't need to leave your house. Like right. you can yeah, find yeah, everything yeah. out there. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's funny. I think, I mean, I think obviously the, the live thing is still important. I still like going to live shows, but you know, you'll hear music soups and people say, Oh no, you really got to see the band live before you know if you can place them. And I don't really get that. I'm like, why? Like, you know, <laughs> like you're right. not, you're, you're, the music's going to be on the show recorded. Right. Nothing to do with how they are live. You know, have music yeah. soups, they want to, we want a cool band. If they're cool live, then you know, somehow that gives me street cut. I don't know. I don't understand that theory. Uh, I think it's just fun to go to live shows and yeah. obviously it helps you network and meet people. And, uh, you know, yeah. sometimes you get you get to go for free when you're a music supervisor, so that's not too bad either. Yeah. So you're like, people I'm on want the you list. to go. Yeah, I'm yeah. On the yeah. List. Like, where's the VIP? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I, it's funny. Like, I I get the invited to all the small shows. I, I'd rather just pay for anyway to help support the artist. But right. and then, then it's like, wait, but I want to go to like Drake. You know, it's like then you can't. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm mentioning Drake Drake so much today. Yeah, yeah but, that's, uh, fine. that's fine. we get it. But, you you know, love Drake. Yeah, yeah right. Apparently. <laughs> Drake uh, pals. But, you know, I, I never get invited to those. I'm sure bigger music soups do, but I always think it's funny that I was like, wait, the real concert that I don't, you know, because I wouldn't pay to go see Drake, but if you, you gave me a ticket, I totally would. Yeah. Uh, sure. yeah. But, uh, you know, that that's funny. But, uh, no, I, I still go, I still like going to live shows. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always fun to be like, oh, yeah, I saw them at, you know, the Troubadour, like, you know, the, the world's smallest venue. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's always fun. It's always fun to have that in your back pocket when you're, you know, trying to, out brag other music supervisors <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely up. so uh, i guess i have one final question for you because we've taken a uh, oh know, yeah you're over time. time sorry yeah. sorry sorry, sorry. <laughs> right. time is money exactly yeah. no, it's, it's been so, a, it's been a pleasure thanks thank you so much um you can only choose one iron maiden or judas priest go oh gotta be iron maiden Yes. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, my man. See, this <laughs> does one... anyone choose Judas Priest? <laughs> There's been a lot. Most yeah. people have jo- chosen Priest for some reason. Yeah. But, yeah, man. Um, well, I have a wall people... wall of Maiden in, in my my studio. So I was gonna say those, those people clearly don't get it. <laughs> exactly. That's why me and Ben are pals. <laughs> I use I, I like to place Judas Priest for comedic moments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, um, so, um, um, ben, where can we um like can people uh, find you online? Are you on Twitter? Twitter, are you on the face place, the Instagram? Do you, do you, um, do you want people to find you? Yeah, or? do you have anything yeah, right. you want to you have anything you want to plug or, or promote? Plug, yeah. Twitter? Nothing really. I mean I am on I am on Twitter. Uh, I don't remember my handle because I'm very inactive, but I think it's Hawk H A W K S T E E N. Nice. Uh, is my Twitter. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't do the social media thing that much. I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of at that weird age where I'm like right sort of on the cusp of being a millennial. So right. I kind of think it's cool to yeah. uh, sort of, you know, that. disparage social media. So you're uh, eating the avocado toast in one hand and, and sneering at your iPhone at the other. Okay, we get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, I, you know, it's, yeah. uh, social media, I mean, it, uh, it's good. I mean, I, look, I, I reach out to artists a lot. And it's a yeah. great way to find stuff. And, you know, I've had people try to clear stuff over Twitter. I'm like, well, I'm going to need some paperwork, but thanks. <laughs> um, but no, I just, I can't, uh, I can't get into it, man. I'm just, uh, I'm too busy with my like real life. I can't like add on like a social media life. I just wouldn't yeah. have the time. So yeah. Wow. No, that's but fair. no, it is good. I mean, we, I look, it's, we you, should you all need be it. so lucky. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But no, look, if you're a band, if you're an artist, like, yeah, it's, you got to do it. Right. It's, you know, it's, it's necessity. And, uh, yeah, I probably should do more, but maybe I would be more successful if I had better tweets. Yeah. You know? It seems Better. like you're doing okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah, like thanks, doing... thanks for depressing me here. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> no. that's, that's, that's what we try to do. We try to educate, entertain, and depress. Yeah. <laughs> Having a great time until you reminded me how lame my social media is. <laughs> no. That's, no, that's so, social social media is for sad people. Yeah, exactly. I'm just kidding. No, it's yeah. bad. I mean, you, I, you know, I have kids. I have young kids, and you kind of start to you read all this, you know, these horrible stuff about it. And so, yeah, it's kind of scary, like, how you're going to – deal with your kids once they get older right. yeah um with the with all that so well but hey that's a con- that's a conversation for another time <laughs> yeah, oh, that's yeah. another that, podcast that's for yeah, our absolutely. Podcast. depressing uh social media tab <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that to we'll leave that to uh that's npr right. or something yeah so. yeah, yeah. all <laughs> things considered depressing dad yeah. we're talking with yeah. uh mr ben hawk yeah. <laughs> about ben. his social media woes yeah well just stuck 
Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ben, for for, <laughs> of course. Uh, for all the time and all the insight. Uh, we really all appreciate right. your time and all the yeah. things you've done for us as a band. I mean, you've been instrumental in keeping us uh, trugging along and putting music out there, and we can't say thank you enough. So, of course, yeah. man. Yeah, I just wish there was more rock being placed. It's like all yeah. hip hop and you know electronic music these days. So. Well, it's we'll to be what, what everyone wants. We'll just start a side project. Yeah, we'll just do that. We'll just do <laughs> you you, you tell us and we'll it. do it. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, man, I, I don't not get asked for rock very much, I got to tell you these that's days. Bullshit. Yeah. That's so. <laughs> neither do we. Yeah, neither do we. <laughs> like, but we're, so, we're like, yeah, go, go listen to Informer and, you know, yeah. figure out some, uh, <laughs> figure some, figure out out some hip hop. Yeah. yeah, we had talked to Snow about uh, potentially collaborating. Yeah, he's a big Kiss fan. So yeah. he was like, he was like, oh, I'd be all about it. So we're, we're going to do something with Snow at some point. And. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll, it'll we'll be send it on that. over. We'll send you that. Hopefully I mean, yeah, it'll be I want, uh, I want listenable the on that track. All right, <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah, but you okay? But you got to get assigned to a major label because <laughs> I know that's no what, problem. That's what you yeah. sure they'll be beating down the door. Beating down the door. Yeah, absolutely. Right. For snow and red hot rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> snow hot rebellion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Red, Ice, whatever. Yeah. We'll, 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 names come later. Names we'll figure later. it out. Yeah. Okay. All, right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ben. We'll of talk course. to you soon. Take care, buddy. Yep. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Sounds good, guys. Yes. Enjoyed it. Bye. 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 We enjoyed it as well. We I would had say. a fun time, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. I thought that was pretty fun. That was a fun time. Now we're back on NPR's social media, Dad. <laughs> and uh, what would yeah. you like to say, uh, Andreas? <laughs> <laughs> I'm is here, that a thing? I'm here with my guest, is Andreas uh, Mungle, <laughs> and uh, no, right. I'm just making shit up now. Yeah, I don't know. Where is a? Uh, where is Dougie? Is Dougie here? We we're on a, a quest for Doug. So that'll do it for this episode of Idiots with Instruments. I am James Saint Jamila, saying, keep it simple. I'm Blind Tone Dub Dougie J. Stay hydrated. I'm Undress Rebellion, and I'm saying never play acoustic, uh, and make sure to nurture your poom. Poom. It's very important. Mm. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Idiots with Instruments is a solid arts and science production. All rights reserved throughout the multiverse. Please subscribe and review the show on iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. Visit idiotswithinstruments.com for exclusive bonus material and to support or sponsor this show.